Hey everybody. Okay, I wanted to give you a quick review of exactly what you'll be doing in module two and highlight some of what is also covered in the class notes. So everything in this video is also in your class notes and in your textbooks, but hopefully this will um, be some additional resources for you as well. So module two, its goal is just to review with you the argumentative pattern that's really a template that you can use in any of the disciplines. So the overall objective of English 112 is writing across the disciplines and that idea of argumentative style writing in any discipline. Um, so right now, this goal is just to look at the argumentative pattern itself. The next module, we start to look um, more at the social sciences, and then we close out the class with the humanities field. All right, so let's just talk about the argumentative pattern itself. Now you've already had English 111, so you are already familiar with the idea of essay structure, that introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Um, this is, of course, a part of any academic writing itself. Um, argumentative writing is no different. It, too, depends upon the idea of having an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. In argumentative writing, Oftentimes, the introduction is used for you to set up your argument by providing background to your audience. So this background could be where you provide statistics, facts. Um, it could be where you give uh, quotations, summaries. Um, it could also be where you present counter arguments and begin to set up where um, you present um, what they say, and then you're going to switch to what you say. Um, but oftentimes, um, the introduction is where people just begin to set up the argument by giving background. And if you remember from English 111, the goal of the introduction is to, to grab attention, to introduce the topic, and then to lead into your thesis statement. So that, um, the, all those attention grabbers that you talked about in English 111 are all good ways to start an essay for an argumentative pattern. Um, things like statistics, facts, um, quotation mark, or quotations, and then of course, um, just giving background information. The thesis statement of an argument, it's really important in the argumentative essay that your thesis statement presents what your argument will be. So you want to have the topic and the viewpoints clear from the introduction. What you do not want to do is use a first person, I believe, I think, I feel. Anything like that are just filler phrases that should be avoided in academic writing. And hopefully, um, this sounds familiar from English 111. Um, Any time that you write academic writing, you always want to you always avoid the second person you. Um, the first person is really reserved for narrative writing. Um, the majority of writing in academic, you're really depending upon just those third person um, nouns. In um, argumentative writing, a lot of times people feel that when they're writing because you're drafting and you're thinking as you're drafting, and so you automatically say, well, I think or I feel because you're feeling, and I understand that this is your opinion, but that's understood because this is an argumentative essay that you're writing. So when you start to put I feel or I think, it actually weakens the tone of your essay because it begins to sound like you're apologizing that you think or you feel. And then just sentence structure wise, um, they're filler phrases. They're not needed in argumentative writing at all or in, in any academic writing. Um, so you want to avoid that in your thesis. Um, the body of your argumentative paper, that's where you're going to be presenting the actual argument, of course. Um, what I try to tell people, um, and again, you probably went over in English 111, that you should try to have um, at least three body paragraphs, but there's no real set rule when it comes to essays. Um, the old rule was three, but you can build upon that any way that you see fit. And especially as you get to longer research papers, there is of course no way that you're gonna have just three body paragraphs for a seven, eight, nine, 10 page paper. So, but the idea is that each body paragraph either introduces a new reason or builds upon that previous reason. So your goal of the body is, of course, to um, support your thesis with specific reasons um, about your argument. So for each reason, 
um, you should be able to clearly state that reason, support that reason with an explanation, and then with evidence, and then with analysis. And you would do that consistently throughout your paper. So what I mean by that is, um, of course, you state the reason. Um, your explanation would be in your own words, with, of course, just explaining that reason. The evidence would then come from whatever research you have done. I try to say um, at least one source for each reason and one credible peer-reviewed academic source, and we talk about that more as the class continues. Um, after each source, I always tell people to analyze it by referring it back to your thesis and offering an explanation of how that source has further supported your argument. So you would do that consistently throughout your body. And then the conclusion, no different from any other essay, in the conclusion you'd want to uh, restate your thesis, review your key ideas, and then of course refer back to your introduction or in, um, your opening statements. Um, so structure-wise is not very different from what you have used in 111. The important thing to remember is that um, you are presenting an argument, so it is strongly depends upon um, organization, it strongly depends upon evidence, explanation, um, and making sure that you are supporting your thesis um, by guiding your, your audience through your argument in your paper. The second part of this week is using summary in a paper. All right, so the reason why uh, we use summary in an argument. Um, anytime you're doing a lot of research, which is going to happen the more that you write in your other classes, um, it's tempting to continually quote and continually quote. The problem with continually quoting in your paper is that you begin to lose your voice in your paper. It becomes quote after quote after quote after quote. And at times you're going to end up with instructors that tell you, I'm not going to take this paper because it's too much direct quotes. There used to be rules that said no more than 10%, no more than 15%. Um, then it just became a genera, um, kind of like a gen generally understood, uh, you need to be the author of your own paper. So what I always tell people, the sources are there to support what you believe to be true. So that means you are the main voice. You need to be the main writing of your paper. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you um, are going to not use sources simply because you feel, gosh, I've used too many now, what should I do? Direct quotes may be limited, but that doesn't mean that the source should be discarded. So that's where summaries and paraphrases come in. Um, a summary allows you to use a lot of information and condense it into your paper. So in a summary, you're taking a larger article and you're summarizing what the author has said. A summary, its goal is to restate the author's thesis, to restate the author's main ideas, and then to insert those into your paper as evidence. Now, some people use a summary um, just like we're doing in our assignment, um, where you are simply submitting a summary as an assignment. Um, other people use summaries in their paper as actual support, um, meaning that you've read a, long, a large article. The whole article was really great. There's a lot of great information in it. Um, you feel that you want to offer a full summary uh, support, and you can do that in any sort of argumentative paper. Paraphrase does tend to be more common when it comes to these things um, over summary, um, but I still include summary so that uh, you can practice it and understand exactly what summary is. So I encourage you to um, read through the uh, summary assignment, and then um, you'll be submitting a summary practice um, as part of your uh, goals this week. So this module, there's two things that you'll be working on. Um, the first one uh, is a small argumentative paper. It's two to three pages. Um, it is, again, in APA format. Um, there was a few questions last week exactly what I mean with APA format. Um, main objectives when it comes to APA format, um, what I require every time is a correct title page, correct font, correct layout, um, documentation, and reference page every time. Um, if you include in an abstract, that's fine, but I do not require an abstract until we get to the longer research assignments. Um, the two to three page paper, um, the questions to address are in this week's module, but you are just writing um, a small argumentative paper as a practice one. 
and then you're doing a summary assignment as well. Okay, so if you have any questions over this, um, please be sure you can use the class form at any time, or of course you can email me um, anytime you have a question. All right, so have a great week.